All right, most of you have probably seen my introductory video, <coughs> excuse me, on the microchip pick. This is a close-up board of what was in that video that was controlling a motor or whatnot. But now we need to face the big problem with microchip pick is how do I program it? Unlike, uh, say, a pickaxe or an Arduino, it usually requires a separate programmer. There is some exceptions to this. Take this circuit here. What you're not seeing off to the side is this. This is my PIC programmer. It's a T48 from XGSU. Uh, it's an Asian company. We'll discuss some of that at the end of the video. But now we need to discuss the big issue with microchip PIC programming and it's going to be this. This is the K150 PIC programmer. It is popular on um, eBay. They're inexpensive. You can get them for $10, $15. They work real well but they have, <coughs> excuse me, a big problem and it's this USB chip. Now this is one of the new, this is supposed to be a new one. Uh, it's ridiculously pricey at $57. They may have fixed that chip problem and it's the PL2303. And it has been a headache for years. But I believe the problem is now solved. There's a lot of these still available for ten dollars on ebay so let's look into what the issue is and how to fix it all right what is the problem we have with the k150 you get it you plug it into your computer you put um, download and install the driver and you get this the pl2303 hxa phased out since 2000 12 contact your supplier the PL 2303 was a pirated part and the manufacturer just shuts it down he he knows the serial number they know the serial number and everything and the and the K150 is useless so is a lot of other low-end Chinese made stuff that use these pirated chips. There is a couple of solutions to this, but I believe I finally found the one we needed. Or somebody else did, and I'll give them credit if I remember. On my website, and this is the page right here, it's, uh, it's, the link is in the description. Here is the original driver that, that I used. It's um, it works on Windows 98, 2000, XP, perhaps some versions of Windows 7. The P3200 Vista works on Windows 10. I happen to have Windows 10 Pro. It works great. I also have a, and it's a compressed file, your programming software for the uh, K150 is also on my site. So we'll ex what this amounts to is this. Nearly every programming cable that is detected by Windows as having a prolific chip was manufactured with an unauthorized or cloned copy. The latest driver installed by Windows blah, 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 is not compatible with these chips. The last compatible prolific driver was somewhere around 2008. So when you install this and say Windows 10, Windows 10 is going to say, aha, this is a prolific chip. We're going to turn around and get you the latest version. You get the latest version. It sees the pirated PL2303HXA and you are turned off. You get this. Now, the driver we're looking at is the P, I call it the P3200 Vista EXE. This is an EX executable file. Download it, install it, follow the instructions. 
and so far this has not been turned off this was a Windows driver so it's not likely to be updated and as far as I know in mine if I right click on start go to device manager oops wrong right click go to device manager here's device manager I open it up there it is Oh, note, com, note your COM port before you start your uh, K150 software. So now, assuming that's installed and everything, you will see this message, and it'll give you a COM port number. Let's go down. When you first start your K150, you're liable to get this. <clears throat> uh oh doesn't detect the com port com 8 well you saw it earlier it was com 5 you'll click OK and close that out you go on down you go over here to file you click on file ports and this comes up you put in your correct com port number you click OK and you're ready to go all right, assuming that you have the correct COM port and everything is working, you will see this. There's your COM5. It's ready. I, the chip selector, I put a 12F683 in it. This was programmed for one of the projects we will be covering. It shows you how to put the chip in. And in this case, I went ahead and did a read on the chip. And this is what came up. There are some things to note here. You can get a lot of information off this window. First of all, if you see 3FFF, that's a hexadecimal number, that means that particular program word is unprogrammed. All the bits are set high. The 683, yeah, the 680, 12F, 683, uses a 14-bit word when it's unprogrammed all 14 bits will be high and that's why you get this the program up here is to blink an LED no this particular program if you remember the introductory video where it was operating an LED display off of an I2C system that is this program and this program if you look at this 0, 1, that's 180, 81, 82, 83. I used 183 bytes for that program, which has a, uh, a 683 has 2,048 bytes, 0 to 2,047. So as you can see, I have not used anywhere near that much. I can blink a typical LED with 30 bytes that's the deal with assembly we will be looking at assembly versus pick basic pro let's go down a little further and see what we got here all right the next issue is in circuit programming if you take the k50 and flip it upside down here is the pin connections it's going to be the white connector here Here's your pin connectors. That's program clock, program data, ground, VDD, that's 5 volts. And VPP is your programming voltage. I think might go up to either 5 or 13 volts. I have never measured it. To use the K150 software to do in circuit programming you would have to wire there I'll show you how that's wired in a moment you'll go here to options you go to the ICSP mode click on it and you will get this and you're ready to go as far as in circuit programming goes alright for in circuit programming whether it's the um, 
for instance the pick kit 2 or 3 or the XG Su Pro T48 that I use and the reason I use this is I program a lot of other devices such as uh, I program a lot of other devices such as older style EEPROMs and multi pin devices if you look at the end it would be yes the end is there you look up on the end it tells you again what pins go where one is VPP master clear program clock program data same here if you can see it if you look at the chips here and you'd have to look at the individual spec sheets you can see the pins where you connect your VPP this is the uh, 683 how it's connected I've used this with the 683 in circuit I've used it on all of these in circuit and it works fine um, this shows you the connection you just have to read the spec sheets if I use the chip I will show you where it goes all right here's another here's an image of my XGSU programmer here is your here are the five connections let's go back one here's your connections this green it's um, here's ground here's your five volts the white happens to be the VPP programming voltage when you connect I use that particular pin on the 683 as also can be programmed as an input for a switch or you can program it as a reset I use it as a switch input wherever you use the VPP you need to pull it high but you need to use a blocking diode to keep the 13 or whatever volts they're using off the 5 volt bus this is a 10k pull up resistor notice the polarity of the diode the cathode goes to to the VPP pin over here is your data pin I mean that is your serial clock and the purple and the purple pin is your serial data doesn't matter whether it's the XGSU or the K150 they hook up to this identically so that ends this um, dealing with pick programmers uh, let me see something here yes here's the XGSU um, operating software you can select the ZIF socket that's on there or you can select the ICSP port here if you try to program that I haven't got anything loaded it tell it pulls all this up for it checks everything for you not a big deal all right appreciate you listening to this so we've gotten by the programmers um, let's start looking at circuits